Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, step right up and enter our world. <laughs> a warning to all, a word of beware. This isn't your normal paranormal affair. <laughs> the strong man's inside. The wolf boy is too. There's a frozen Neanderthal and a bearded lady to boot. The admission is free, no fee to come near. Your stories you'll hear, born of horror and fear. A Bigfoot sighting is certain, a ghost story or two, an alien abduction, or a conspiracy brood. <laughs> We're the collectors of stories, testimonies of the weird. Yes, soon you'll learn much of the world the normal ones fear. <laughs> Welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow. With your host, John and Stacy Edwards of ParanormalSideshow.com. Hello and welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow. I'm your host, John Edwards, and joined as always by my lovely wife, Stacy. Hello. And today, mm -hmm. we have a really awesome, cool, spectacular show. <laughs> It's going to be cool. It is. It's going to be mysterious. Yes. And all because of our main attraction. Yes. I am really excited about this one because I love mysterious manuscripts. Yes. I love mysterious books. I love devil's Bibles and, and angels codexes and, <laughs> you know, anything that somebody might be, um, you know, searching the world for to find clues and uh, or right. so, something that still has a scratch in our head after this long right because they know? can't figure it out awesome. smartest people in the world can't figure them out yeah absolutely mm -hmm. it, it's just any anything that baffles scientists as we know right i like the baffle scientist well hopefully we'll talk about some mysterious manuscripts that people haven't heard of well they, not the real popular ones that that is the hope yes. but you know where they'll find more stuff about it if they, if they go to um ParanormalSideshow.com. That's your address to find everything there is mysterious about manuscripts. I wonder if they have womanuscripts. Um, Facebook.com slash Paranormal Sideshow. On the Twitter, it's at Sideshow97. And on Instagram, hot damn, it's John and Stacey Edwards. On YouTube, just search Paranormal Sideshow. Mm -hmm. And on iTunes, sweet, beloved iTunes. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and leave us a nice, quality, beautiful review. Yes. And we will reward you greatly on the other side. We'll talk nicely about you. We will always talk nicely about you, regardless. <laughs> don't listen to my wife. She she sometimes gets catty with these things. I didn't mean that things. we don't. I just meant that <laughs> if we see a nice review, we'll be like, oh, and we'll talk nicely about that. Person. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And no matter what their name is. Exactly. You know? B Rod twenty two, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, paranormalsideshow dot com. That's the one you want to go to, and um, you know, find out everything. Really, uh, all these other sites, uh, the Facebook and the Twitter and um, all that stuff. It's it, it's all can be found on paranormalsideshow dot com. Yes. So go there, tell your friends, tell your enemies. Uh, it's the place to go. If you get abducted by aliens, let them know that you're a Sideshow listener, and they will give you a free prize at the end of your tour. Um, <laughs> so You may not like where it goes, but... <laughs> no, no, you know. You never like where it goes. So I want to talk about what we just passed. Okay. Halloween. Okay, I wasn't sure where that was going. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I want to talk about this because, you know, people that have been up here with us, th they've been on the journey. Our listeners have been on the journey with us right. from the haunted south mm -hmm. into the... Haunted her north. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we'll go with that. It's a John word. Right. So in the haunted er north, right. uh, we have had a great, wonderful, like mysterious, fun, exciting year. Mm -hmm. We have. Lots we, of cool stuff up here. Yeah, I mean, we've seen so many new things and so many beautiful sights and um, so much history, right? Right. As close as you can get to uh, England without being in England. Mm -hmm. It's New England. Yeah, I, I <laughs> think that's why they call it that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it, it's been awesome. And, and so I didn't think it could get much better. Right. I just didn't, you know. And, and I, just to, to, to fill this out for you guys, where we were from in the part of the beautiful South that we were in. Right. Halloween had became more of a trunk or treat. 
Right. You just, you go to an event or you'd go to your church and trick or treat at car trunks or, you know, right, that kind right. of thing. Yeah. You, you don't, you, you, you don't just go door to door. Nobody went door to door. You bought candy every year, mm-hmm. hoping that somebody would come door to door. But nobody came door to door. Yeah. I it, mean, I'm sure there are neighborhoods there where kids yeah. still kind of do that, but it's not on a grand scale. There are, yeah. um, you know, but but also there's a lot more that don't. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's a side effect of the conditions mm-hmm. um, with uh, socially with, with some things that have been going on. Let's let's not kid anybody. We, we've had a uh, we have a strange world these days. Yes. It's a lot different than it used to be. Yes. It's dangerous for children. Um, mm-hmm. to, to run about. And, and it's a sad side effect to our current climate in this world. Right. But to take from that side note, let me tell you about something that's really cool. So Stacy and I, we tried doing everything we could to make Halloween Halloween. Right. We, we, for the whole month, you know, we we went to events. We've planned mm-hmm. to do even more events. We've, you know, we've watched movies. We've done everything we could do. You know, we, well, these people are doing a free Halloween event. Let's go there. Right. These people are doing this. Let's go there. You know, this is all fun. Let's make it part of the season. And, and the scenery, as I've talked about before, was really fitting for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, the old houses, the tree lined streets, the the foliage, uh, you know, turning orange and yellow mm-hmm. early and uh, falling onto the ground, the crisp air, everything was there. Mm-hmm. We didn't expect what happened on Halloween. <laughs> so we did take our Ariana mm-hmm. to a event. And uh, a Halloween party. She, a Halloween party. Mm-hmm. And she danced and had fun. And boy, right. Boy, did she dance. <laughs> But she danced and danced and danced a little more. Could care less if anybody was around her. Mm -hmm. She just danced. Had her costume on. She had a ball. Very, very confident young girl, which Mm -hmm. obviously that is, you know, apple tree kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So we went from there. We took her to eat Mm -hmm. at a diner. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we left there, it was, you know, in the six o'clock hour, I believe, probably 630, something like that. Mm -hmm. Still not, dark. Yeah, I was still not expecting anything. And we had actually said, you know, hey, if we see somebody trick-or-treating, let's stop and, and, and let Ariana get that experience up here this year, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> there was, I mean, we live in, we live in, in, in like the historic district of this, of, of this city that we're in. Lots of old houses and lots mm-hmm. of streets that are your traditional streets. I mean, with, right. you, like you would see on a movie, you know, like mm-hmm. there's the houses, there's the trees, there's the next street, the next street, the next street. Right. Every town has the tree streets, has the... Right. And on the very yeah. end, they turn some of the old houses into businesses. Mm-hmm. But in the neighborhood, right. it's actually homes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, we come across, oh my God, the <laughs> trick-or-treaters. Hordes. I think it was uh, hordes. I mean, I mean, it was like... <laughs> It was like The Walking Dead. Like I was, I was pretty sure they were CGI on some of these kids because I felt like they had like maybe fifty real kids, and then the rest right. were computer animated. Right. Um. It was bananas, and there was people sitting on their porch, mm-hmm. enjoying the festivities and watching out for the kids. Mm-hmm. There was people. There was a freaking. There was somebody that turned their house into a free haunted house. Yeah, you had to go in there. Ari didn't get candy from that house. She took one look at it. Was like, yeah, no. Yeah. No, it looked pretty <laughs> scre- it looked pretty creepy. But I mean, and it wasn't just one street or two streets, it was all the streets. Mm-hmm. And then I get reports from throughout the the greater New England area of three, four hundred trick or treaters, you know, <laughs> a night at houses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it it's still alive, folks. It was great. Well, we had trick or treaters come into our door even after we were done. We still had them coming yeah. and knocking on the door. And one thing I thought was really cool was some of the trick-or-treaters that came to our door were older. Like we're talking 15, 16 years old, dressed up. I mean, not pulling pranks, dressed up. Their parents were dressed up, standing there, taking them trick-or-treating. And they were just as cute as the kids. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. It was and, great. Ari had a blast. And it was just accepted. And I might like to point out that it was about 38 degrees. And let me point out, <laughs> let me point out also. I am a Southerner uh-huh. by birth, birthright, and, and, and the whole nine yards. Um, I love the South. Uh-huh. I absolutely love the South. I have been all over it performing. I've been all over it working. Uh-huh. I, I have. I love the people. I I never knew how wonderful <laughs> this area is 
you know, people are always like, why'd you go up there? It's so cold. And and I think that's the secret. <laughs> I think that, so. They keep the people yeah. out. They, you got to be tough. <laughs> they're, they're, just, they're just like, you know what? Let's tell all those other people <laughs> that it's really freaking cold and you don't want to come up here. Well, it is really cold, but the people that live here are used to it. Like kids were running around last night, no coats. They did. I mean, like well, it was I summer. Think, I think the people who listen to our show. Yeah are the people that appreciate good paranormal areas. I think so. And, you know, that that's it's just chocked full. I mean, you know, of of, of historic mm-hmm. witches' graves. I mean, there's place, there's two witches' graves in Maine. Yeah. You know, two. Not, you don't hear about one <laughs> normally. And, and people actually come see the witch's grave. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that kind of stuff is just really cool, man. Yeah. Um, you know, case in point, I hope everybody's Halloween was fantastic, yes. wonderful, awesome. However you celebrate it, if, if you just got a bunch of candy and you watched horror movies, good for you. We've done that. You know? We have done that. Good for you. <laughs> um, we actually, um, we did the, uh, we watched the Nick Groff special yes, the paranormal lockdown the paranormal lockdown oh, such, that was really good it was great yeah i thought i thought really you know without having a tv segment here um uh, we'll just talk about the halloween programming real quick off on the fly yeah okay. um i thought that the uh the nick groff special um was just fantastic mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. It, it it chronicled where they left off on their series right um uh, last year mm-hmm. and 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 then went you know across the pond and right um it was it, anybody who hasn't seen it you should really try to catch it i don't know if they'll repeat that on the two-hour format or not um, i don't see why not but, i would think they would replay it it was really good and i like that one thing i like about that show is i like that they stay at these locations like non-stop yeah yeah for <laughs> a while you it, know for days it's awesome and the um um, they caught some of the better evidence mm-hmm. that I've ever seen on on a paranormal television show. Yeah. Um, yeah. Real cool thing about it is they caught a running apparition that was so damn close to what Stacy and I seen on that first encounter in 97. Oh, yeah, it was eerie. It gave us both an eerie feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of looked at each other, and Stacy was actually the first to say it. She's like, that's kind of what we seen run across the house. Mm-hmm. And you know, like the shape of it and stuff, was right? Very similar. Yeah, it yeah. was crazy. It brought back a lot of memories mm-hmm. uh, of that um, harrowing experience that we had. Mm-hmm. So you know, it w- it was really cool, and they touched on a few elements in that show, and, and you know, a few theories that that I actually have. They didn't I, they didn't really rein it in, right? But it was a few theories that I have, and it was funny because I shared one of those theories with Stacy during the show. We always stop and discuss, and, and we'll pause and discuss, just like we're doing the show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I talked to somebody the other day, and they were like, you know, I, I love how you guys interact, and, and that's really cool. You could do that for the show, you know, and I was like, it's not for the show. That's just that's <laughs> just, just how we talk. That's just how we talk, like, all the time, and he's like, I wish I could talk to my wife like that, you know, um, but, you know, it, it's it's cool. We, we were watching the show. <laughs> And I stop it and I talk to Stacy about one of my theories. I have six really strong theories. Um, I wish, you know, if I was John Tenney, I would have my 60 <laughs> very strong theories. <laughs> but I'm not, pre- I, you know, John. John's done it for so long. And, 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 and anybody who listens to the show know, knows the pedestal I put that, you know, that man on in the paranormal. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I, um, I tell you. Uh, 97 to now I, I have really come across there's more theories but there's six really strong ones one, I've never ranked them either but but one of those very strong theories mm-hmm. is when you go on a, a lockdown or an investigation and, and for us investigations take months we've chronicled that right um, when we get done with an investigation of a place um, and we're actually reviewing evidence mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm and of course, I guess that happens throughout the whole time you're investigating. But uh, when we're when we're reviewing evidence, I'm normally the audio person, and I always have been. Right. Um, so when I'm in a room investigating, uh, listening to the audio in my house, mm-hmm. I have noticed that I bring whatever I'm listening to to the house. Um, I don't. I'm going to try to say this correctly. But it's it's almost as if you open a channel to the activity of the place you're investigating. 
and somehow pull the spirit or spirits from that location Mm -hmm. to your house. It's almost like uh, uh, a telepathic doorway opens. Right. And you create a vortex Mm -hmm. uh, portal just from listening to this evidence now maybe it doesn't happen for everyone and stacy pointed out well maybe you know possibly it's because of your sensitivity Mm -hmm. um that that could be the case but i also think when i do my audio evidence i mean i don't want anybody around i'm very uh intense and and i always build focused i always build this construct in my head of where i'm at walking so i play it back as it's happening Right. Like when I'm listening to the recording, if I'm walking down this hallway, I build that hallway in my mind and I'm trying to relive that moment. And a lot of times I'll start, I'll feel a tap or I'll hear a sound outside of the headphones and, um, and I'll stop and there'll be activity in an otherwise not haunted location. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, I pointed that out last night and, 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 and not so many words, but, um, <clears throat> she, she pointed out the sensitivity thing. The funny thing was we get to the end of that episode. Mm-hmm. And it's showing Nick um, reviewing the Black Monk. Uh, yeah, the video evidence the video that evidence. they got, that really cool thing. Mm-hmm. And something goes bang in his house. Yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. And she looks over at Stacy looks over at me like, ah, there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, something else that I that was very similar that we kind of drew on was, and you talk about this all the time, about all that time where you would hear things on investigations and other people wouldn't hear them. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that happens to Nick some. Like, he'd be like, did you hear that? A lot. And we really related to the way that they investigated with, you know, him hearing the stuff and her not really, Katrina not really hearing it. Right. Um, That's kind of like me and you. Like, you always hear more things than I hear. And I don't know if that's because of your level of sensitivity or what, but I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it always happens. And it's always happened. Um, not just with you, but right. Well, it's cool that we know why now, yeah. so that it's not an issue anymore. Like we understand right. that that's going to happen. So right. I don't get quite as bad as I <laughs> as I did uh, for a long time. Um, also, uh, this Halloween weekend there was the Ghost Adventure Special, mm-hmm. and um, it was uh, I believe it was also two hours. Yeah, I think so. And um, now I don't completely agree. With everything that was done on that one, mm-hmm. no, no, me neither. Um, not that I don't agree with with the ceremony. If anybody ha- has seen it, you know, right? Um, it's the not finishing, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> that I, I had more trouble with. Yeah, I I don't think that was a, a wise decision on their part um, to even do something like that. And I feel like maybe um, they were influenced to do that. Right. To say, let's do this. Like, maybe if they had been thinking clearly, they would have not right. done it in the first place. Well, I mean, you I know, know. The, whatever you think of these shows, um, I, I will say that both shows have touched on something that, that mm-hmm. is real and uh, true. When you mess with the dark side of the paranormal, right, it doesn't forget you. That's um, true. Anyone who's ever done it, anyone who's ever went purposely after... Uh, you know, a negative haunting, mm-hmm. a demonic haunting, um, in- inhuman, um, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, uh, when, when you go through one of these, they don't forget you. And it's, and it, it's as if they draw you to certain places or draw you back. And, and, mm-hmm. and it, and it doesn't, you don't want to do this for kicks. Right. You know, and if you're doing it for kicks, you probably won't stay in it very long. And if you're doing it for kicks, you're not going to be actually helping people. Right. So, I, you know, I believe that, that you have to really take, um, you have to take the knowledge that, you know, there's going to be things happen. You're going to have things follow you home. Mm-hmm. It's just going to happen. But protect yourself. Right. You know, right. Uh, you know, go, when you go into this stuff, I had to learn the hard way and a very hard way. Well, I'm sure a lot of people did learn the hard way right yeah i mean you you, you just gotta go with it now last show i'll talk about oh i hope i was gonna mention it if you were go ahead you mentioned it it. um the new one with amy and adam kindred spirits yeah um if you haven't checked the show out yet definitely watch it it is great and it's i like it because they're very they just work so well together yeah so the funny story here Uh uh, when when stacy and i first pitched our first documentary Mm mm-hmm 
it was kindred spirits. It was it was like that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was just like it was like, look, we don't. We've wanna, always thought that was a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It, just the two of us. We go out there. We don't. I mean, just just doing the homes, mm-hmm. um, and 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 going to the library. Anybody who's seen our documentaries that we always put the library part. We, mm-hmm. you know, because we really do that. We really do our research, and mm-hmm. most of most of this um, pursuit, right, is research. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, a big huge chunk of yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's yes. it's mostly research, mm-hmm. and it's more about the journey, in my opinion, than right. than the actual destination. It's it's. Mm-hmm. It, it, the journey is what is intriguing right. about all of it. And um, so I love that show just because it really invoked these, these um, feelings mm-hmm. uh, from me. Like, oh, my God, that's exactly right. what we thought a good show would look like. And, and, it, and it really it really is. Right, right. And not to mention, I mean, even when they were on Ghost Hunters, we always liked the segments with Amy and Adam. We'd be you, like, you, oh, well, you got to see Amy you, and Adam. You, you have to have chemistry. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and that's another thing. On a team... Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's two of you or 20 of you, you have to have chemistry. If you don't have chemistry, when you're out on a, a location, you're not going to get evidence. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, when you have chemistry, you play off each other. You 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 know what the other one's thinking. You, it seems like you get the same level of excitement. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, you draw, you, you almost energize each other. And, and so I love that. I just love that. I give it, um, you know, five ghosts, five out of five. So, you know, and speaking of five out of five, it's about time for some paranormal news. Okay, so let's get to the news this week. Let's do it. All right, so this first story that I want to mention is a story that's kind of been going around different news sites, not your typical paranormal sites, but I have seen it out there. Mm-hmm. And it's about the supposed Egyptian coin that had an alien head on it that was found in the house in Egypt. So have you seen this story? I I have. Okay. Well, if you haven't seen it, of course, I'll have a link up for it on the show website. You can go read all about it. But supposedly, there is a group of people. It was kind of vague. They found these coins um, in this house in southern Egypt. And they were unique because instead of having a human figure, they had an alien head mm-hmm. on them. And some, like one of the reports said that one of the coins on the back of it actually said, had some Latin words. Right. In, which was in weird. Egypt. Yeah, exactly. And it was like, the words were opportunus adest, which this particular website claims means it's here in due time. Right, and it supposedly has like aliens and you know spaceships and things like that. Um, but like I said, the original website with the information didn't have a lot of pictures and didn't have right. like a lot of detailed information. But then um, other websites started picking up the story, and all of a sudden, all these other photos started showing up that may or may not have been yeah the original absolutely coins. So one explanation for this is something that they call hobo nickels. Have you heard of hobo nickels? I, I, I have, actually. <laughs> Supposedly, coins that are made, older coins, right. are softer metal, and they can be altered. And altered, so like people would alter the art. pictures. Yeah, like an artwork. Yeah. And make them into whatever they want. And so they feel like these coins have just been altered to have these alien heads on them. It's just, you know, a hoax. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's a couple of schools of thought here. Um, mm-hmm. Number one... <laughs> Even if we go ancient astronaut theory, right? They still had spaceships mm-hmm. that that traveled, you know, light years <clears throat> to get here, right? And then they have these coins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, something tells me that 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 they've that the aliens mm-hmm. have found a, another way of currency by now. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, know. I don't think that. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I I would I would think that they use a different type of currency and um right. And I don't think that ancient civilizations would make coins featuring the heads of aliens. Yeah, I that don't, just doesn't I, make any sense. I, so I you know, know. I, I don't know. I, I mean, would they? 
maybe. I mean, they probably wouldn't put the butt of an alien on there, but <laughs> I would hope they would. I really hope that we meet the civilization and they, they show me their money and it's just like butts and tits, you know? <laughs> well, what the most interesting part of this article that I thought was about the Hobo Nichols, because I had never heard of them before. Yeah. And I didn't realize that was a thing that could be done, but there are a lot of examples of people that have done it. Right. And it's it's pretty cool. But um, these particular coins, like I said, the article is very vague. Right, of course and, it is. And, you know, it wasn't... Well, even the, the one with the proof. Latin writing was not on the original story. Not the picture of it. It mentioned it, but there was not a picture of it. But now all of a sudden you can find pictures with lots of coins that have that writing. Right. Uh, which you know people have just made the pictures to get along with yeah, the story. Yeah, I might go find some old nickels tonight and <laughs> make some myself. You have to be old, though. I mean, so you can... Right. I, I don't think I could do it because I can't stand oh, just thinking about scratching metals giving me goosebumps right now. Oh, well, oh, I thank take you. It. <laughs> we mentioned it. Okay. Well, let's move along. Let's. All right. So let's update a story Uh huh. that we talked about last week about the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yes. Let's update that. Do you remember we that. talked about the guy who I said vaguely remember that, that the mystery has been solved or whatever? Right. Well, it just so happens that the man in that story, Randy Cerveni, Mm -hmm. The one that was on the segment, um, it's a Science Channel show called What on Earth? And he was on the segment. Right. Well, he has come out and said that he didn't actually mean what it looked like he meant right. in this segment. Like he was actually on there to talk about the mysterious clouds mm -hmm. and the microbursts and things like that. And somehow in the editing and the translation process for the show, right. they made it look like he was offering up a legitimate solution for this Bermuda Triangle mystery when he really doesn't have any interest in the Bermuda Triangle at all, is what right, he says. Right. Um, so we know all about the whole creative editing process. Oh, we do. And what happens to yeah. shows that, you know... Anybody, all your paranormal I, shows know yeah, about that. Yeah, I think that. anybody who's done any kind of shooting yeah, yeah, knows, knows all about that. And I think it's great because, you know, I made quite a fear about the mm -hmm. the the fact of that was crap. Right, you know? right. It was crap and baloney and, you know. He agrees with you. <laughs> yeah, and the guy who said it agrees right. with that. So, yeah. you know, it, it, the Bermuda Triangle, it seems like every year they mm -hmm. have a new theory yeah. Um, but maybe they don't. Maybe it's just somebody in a writer's room deciding. Maybe. Well, he actually laughed about it, and he said that he didn't actually have a chance to preview the segment before it was finished, and then they went ahead and put it out. And Because usually I think he watches them and tries to correct them if they've messed something you know, up. You know, we went to a so. lecture one time. Yeah, I was thinking about that. That's funny. Um, the, we went to a lecture one time, mm -hmm. and the guy had been featured on Ancient Aliens. Yeah, he was the Maya experts. Right. Yeah. And um, he he talked on there that he's like, you know, that's all editing. He's like, mm -hmm. um, that you know, I'm a Mayan historian. Right. And I've done this my entire life. Mm -hmm. um, so they just edited out the parts they wanted to use. Right, and that made it sound like he was saying something different than what he was saying. Right. And I mean, I don't think they were intentionally trying to... According to him now, let me let me yeah. go ahead and say... Yeah, according to him. For someone so upset about it, I've mm -hmm. seen him back on that show in four or five different shirts. Yeah, so, I know. So, you know, I, every time I see him on the show, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, yeah, you know... I don't know that it actually changed what he was saying to, we, we to were, such a degree. We were at a college lecture. Yeah. Watching this guy, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think at the time he was talking about the 2012 yeah. uh, thing because yeah, it, it, was, it was fastly approaching. It was coming up, yeah. Um, you know, so we just wanted to know who our new gods were. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, Stacy and I, we do crazy stuff. So we were we were there and he just happened to talk about this, you know, mm -hmm. and I mentioned the whole time, I was like, that's the guy, was, you know, he, he talks about Mayan stuff on Ancient Aliens, what, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's, that's I, I, in, in front of the college crowd, mm -hmm. maybe he says, Oh, you know, it's just crap. I never, <laughs> I would never. It was all editing, but he, but you know, when he's at the bar, right? He's like, let me let me tell you guys something. <laughs> I went in this chamber, and and you just wouldn't believe. You know, right? You know how that goes. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Anyway, cool story. But I thought I'd just update that he did not say he had a solution. So there you go. There you go. Don't have to be upset about it. Okay, so let's move on to this other story that we had on our website about the possible alien signals from 234 different stars yes in the universe this no, is a kind of a cool story very cool story all right so Hermano bora who's from laval university in quebec 
he made this theory that extraterrestrials might try to contact us using some kind of light source, like lasers or some sort of technology like light that. Bright. Right. So he is this grad student um, that went through two and a half million stars that had been recorded by the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. And he found this exact signal that his professor had, you know, mm -hmm. theorized the exact shape, the exact Everything was exact in 234 different stars. Wow. So they tried to rule out some of the possibilities, like maybe it was a star pulsating or any, you know, any logical, and they couldn't figure out what it was. Hmm. So since he already had that theory that, you know, that could possibly be one of the solutions to what that is, and then they went and found it, I just thought that was really amazing. It is amazing. And, and could this be um, possibly that his professor received that information psychically um you know maybe it came maybe. through maybe it came to him from the universe mm -hmm. maybe it went to those aliens right from the universe right and, and you they're, know, they're not suggesting that there's 234 different alien races trying to contact you know but some of those could possibly really be so let me ask you a question this is mm -hmm. stars they're seeing right so they're seeing mm -hmm. suns yes and there was um in the article it talked about how the the way it, the way the stars were, that it led to the theory that it really could be extraterrestrial. Like there was actually planets and things like that. You know what I mean? Like, so what are they doing? I wonder. I mean, um, well, you know, the YMCA signals, or <laughs> I don't know what know. they're doing. But of course, other scientists are skeptical. Well, obviously. Of course, and some are baffled. And the one that um, they're always baffled, aren't they? Um, so Andrew Simeon, I think that's how you say his name. It's not really it's not really spelled Simeon, it's a but very it, AP it's last weird. name, isn't it? He's the director of SETI Research Center. Oh, I know you'll love those SETI guys. I love SETI. Of course, he's the one that comes out and says he plans to follow up uh, with a project that he calls Breakthrough Listen Initiative. He heads this project. Yeah, he's just trying to fit his damn radio into and it. And so he's going. We don't to, look at lights. <laughs> so he's going to like try to. We listen validate some of these signals right so either he's he's really genuinely interested and wants to validate this or because he works for SETI he wants to discredit it I don't know <laughs> I, you know what I might like SETI if it hadn't been for Independence Day because that's that's forever going to be my in my vision of the SETI guy playing golf yeah when the signal that, that's comes always in. like my my vision of SETI I know I you know, know if, you, if you work for SETI and you listen to the show our, our show has far reach you know I see where you listen Mm -hmm. Um, if you, if you work for SETI or listen, you know, to, uh, someone who works from SETI drinking beers, um, you know, contact me, <laughs> let, let me know how wrong I am. And, and I would love to give you your opportunity to, to, uh, talk with me and, you know, <laughs> I, I, it worked for the crop circle guy, the crop circle guy. Mm -hmm. I pooped on crop circles until right. somebody smartened me up. I there pooped, I pooped on Bigfoot, you know? Right. So, so it, now you're pooping on SETI. I'm, you know, I'm taking a big dump on SETI. <laughs> I just, I just, I know we had the wow signal or the mom signal, however it was. However it was. Um, I know we had that and that's great, 70s. Um, but I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like they're almost there mm -hmm. to, I don't know, to full us. Well, that's what I was talking about. Like where they say they're going to investigate this, you right. know, are they really going to do it wholeheartedly? Yeah, I mean, there's some great know. people out there in MUFON mm -hmm. that, that you know, um, I think very highly of and have met over the years. And, and, and there's some great UFO researchers that really push the, uh, push the envelope. Right. And, um, you know, it's just like I was talking about for archaeology. I, I have every bit of respect for someone who spent half their life in school to be an archaeologist. Right. But, you know, I love forbidden archaeology. Mm -hmm. I just absolutely adore it. So anyway, continue. All right. Well, let's move on. Um, this next story is one that I put on the website. You'll have to go see. It's about the strange anomaly in the Alaska River that yes. got filmed, Yes, which was pretty cool. Um, what happened this was... This one's actually making the rounds. It is. I've seen this it everywhere. Is. It's been around a lot. So what is this? Craig McCaw. McCaw. Yeah, I was yes. waiting for you to do it. <laughs> he works for the Alaska Bureau of Land Management. And so he was out at... Well, that's a dangerous job. The Ch Chenna River. I wonder how many of those guys they go through in a year. I don't know. Probably quite a few. You know, like, hey, um, 
We need you to go. Yeah. (laughs) What happened to Craig? He was documenting the changing of the seasons. Like he had a video camera and I guess he was just filming at the river. How many seasons do they have there? In Alaska. Winter? Yeah. And then colder winter? I don't don't really know. I've not been to Alaska. All right. (laughs) So he ended up filming this strange thing in the water. It was about 12 to 15 feet long. It had some ice on it. And it was kind of moving through the water in a really strange way. It was, yes. I watched it. If you haven't seen the video, go to our website. There's a link there. Definitely watch it. And he had no idea what it was. So he posted it to the Alaska Bureau of Land Management Facebook page so that people could look at it and comment. And of course, there's comments all from that piece of rope with ice on it to, hey, it's a sea monster. Right. You know, I mean, you got all range of things. Well, you know, and we always, of course, it's our job mm-hmm. to talk about it being Bigfoot, to talk about it being Loch Ness Monster or mm-hmm. the, all this stuff. But, you know, we had we had mentioned the, the, um, um, the Josh Gates show. Right. Expedition Unknown. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about that, how they were doing that six part or four part series on on the Yeti. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, the conclusion to that, uh, to some would be, you know, just the normal thing. Like, we don't know what this is. But the coolest thing to me on the whole show was the fact they found a brown bear. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and that they thought was extinct. That they thought was extinct. I know. They were like, well, this can't be any of the bears that live here because they're not this big. Mm -hmm. And, Lo and behold, there was a brown bear there at one time, and they thought it was extinct. To me, you know, that's why we do this. Yes. Even if we find something else, it's still... No, but it's that still... just proves that a gigantic animal, animal yeah. can live in the woods right. without anybody knowing it. Right. I actually can... That is amazing yeah, proof right That there. bear took a shit in the woods, and nobody heard it. <laughs> So all this time, that bear has been there. Maybe there's more than one. Yeah. And nobody knew... And it's been walking around and everything. So why right. couldn't there be a Bigfoot uh, without anybody knowing? Absolutely. I mean, that is proof that, right there bear that it can happen. Is every bit as big as a Bigfoot. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that and, you know, I'm just saying there can be, maybe that is just a, um, you know, really long tuna. Uh, right. <laughs> you know, right. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a uh, Arctic salmon or whatever. But yeah, some weird fish. Yeah, Get I a mean, river monsters guy out there. But it's still, <laughs> it's still a 15 foot fish. Yeah, regardless or snake or whatever. Right. So and I think the thing about it was people were trying to say that it was just a rope, but I think it was moving like it was actually slithering sort of. There you go. Forth. We found an intelligent rope. It was very weird. Anyway, how scary is that? <laughs> that would be even scarier than a big <laughs> sea monster, I think. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. I'm going to give you another update. Um, do you remember when we talked about the contest to spend the night in Dracula's castle? I do remember that. Yes. Well, that was did actually... Did we win? We did not win because oh. obviously we didn't spend we, Halloween yeah, night in we Romania. Anyway, it was Short won memory loss. by two Canadians. And eh? their names are Robin and Tammy Varma, their brother and sister. What's that all about? <laughs> and they actually went to Romania and when they... They were super nice the whole time. Yeah, they, they were actually. But... One of the reasons that they won when they answered their question about what they would say or whatever, they had a grandfather who was a world authority in Gothic literature, and he visited the castle in the 70s, in 1976. And so they talked about how they wanted to go and, you know, because he had been there and, you know, whatever, nice stuff. So they won. So they got to go and they got the carriage ride. It's really a safe choice, isn't it? To let the Canadians come. (laughs) I suppose. It's like, who's going to screw up the castle? Well, oh, there's two Canadians that applied. Well, Jesus, they'll probably clean the place. Well, supposedly... By the time they leave, we'll have free health care. <laughs> supposedly, their whole arrival and everything was filmed by drone, but I haven't actually seen that footage. I don't know if Airbnb is going to put that out or They rode in on a moose. <laughs> no, they didn't. Horse-drawn carriage. But um, they even actually slept in coffins. There was That's velvet so cool. lined coffins. That's so cool. So I'm sure they had a great time. That was a pretty cool contest. No, that's awesome. I mean, th- we need more things like that in the world. Yeah. But on that same kind of note, um, I just wanted to mention this other story that I put on the website that I thought was really cute. It was a Halloween promotion that this company did in New York Mm -hmm. where you could get a free haunted plant delivered to your house. And it was a promotion where you you had to live. marijuana plant? No, you had to live in New York. And there's this company called Handy. And you download their app, their Handy app. And like you can hire cleaners and handymen, stuff like that. And you could request that they bring you. That they bring you. A plant from the Dr. Best House and Medical Museum, which is a haunted location. Right. And they would bring it to you. And they said that if you got a ghost because of this plant from this property, and you could prove it, that they would give you 10% off cleaning for a year. Okay. So let me uh, 
you always talk about, well, you know, you always try to weigh out these deals I try giving you. Right. You know, like right. if you walk downstairs for me and bring me a drink and a pack of crackers, I will not expel gas on you. <laughs> you know, and you're always like, ah, you know. Um, now, it, if you bring something from a haunted location. Right. Now, we have experience of this. Mm-hmm. I can say out of all the things we've learned in, in 20 years, mm-hmm. the one thing we never had to be told was not to bring something back from a haunted from location. A ha- exactly. <laughs> like, like, I remember the first time I was at Waverly, mm-hmm. everybody's like, I'm going to take this pebble. I'm going to take this rock. You yeah, know? I'm going to take this brick. I'm like, I'm going to not take any of it. <laughs> I mean, because I, I, I'm, I know. So do you think that works with plants that's, that grow on the <sighs> property? No. You don't think that, that I, extends to the, the I, plants? I don't. I mm-hmm. think we're talking maybe stone tape or... or right, because um, most of the time you hear that, it's usually like a brick or a rock or a I, part of the building. I mean, I don't know, Stacey. I mean, they <laughs> could, I mean, a ghost could probably attach itself to anything. We're not, we're not even positive they really have boundaries, um, you know, except, except for the ones that, that maybe don't know they're dead and they keep walking through the same thing. Um, you know, we've mm-hmm. talked about this before. Right. So, I, you know, I don't know. I guess it could attach itself to anything. Well, I don't know anything about the Dr. Best House and Medical Museum, but I mean, I suppose if they're haunted by, you know, like a past gardener or something. I think the very fact that they're saying, hey, spirits, if you want to leave, mm-hmm. you can jump on this plant and we'll send you somewhere that where people actually want you to come. <laughs> you know, I mean, right? right. I mean, if it is invitation only. Right. And, yeah, people had to request it. Right. We, so. we, we, we know there's theories out there that you have to invite something in or that you have right. to. If that's the case. That is a totally inviting in a spirit, I mean, there's a it? bunch of morons that are just like, <laughs> hey, you know. Well, there isn't any word yet on how many people requested plants and whether or not anybody was And if you're a listener haunted. who uh, who actually requested one of the plants, um, the moron statement was uh, not exactly the views of the Paranormal Sideshow or any of its subsidiaries. <laughs> uh, it was... Purely the own uh, opinion of one person who would not take a haunted anything from exactly. anywhere. Exactly. Because so. you just end up having to send it back with a note of apology. Yeah, or get exercise. <laughs> All right, last thing, last story. Um, this is about a really cool book that they um, have finally put online. It's called The Scottish Witchcraft Book. It's from 1658, and it spans a period of time from 1658 to 1662. And it is actually a book, handwritten book, that lists the names of of those people that were accused of witchcraft in Scotland at the time. And it all has like their names. It has some of the towns they were from. Sometimes there's notes about their confessions, things like that. And it was actually made possible by um, the genealogy site Ancestry. And so that way, if you are of Scottish descent, you can actually look through this digital book and see if any of your ancestors are in there, like if you're descended from can we, uh, a witch. Can we go through there and find our ancestors and – sue the people who killed them for unlawful uh, uh ex- execution no, or, i don't think i okay. don't i don't i don't think any of those people exist anymore <laughs> no but um they you know they think they feel like most of these people were just folk healers you know yeah. the, the normal droll or whatever right. but it's cool it's cool that they actually digitized it so that people can read it and there's a link on our website where you can go and actually see the actual it's sad scans it's very sad mm-hmm. it's it's awesome what they've done mm-hmm. and it's very cool and you hear the word witchcraft and you're just like, oh, I got to have that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. But just the story itself, the fact that you could fill a book mm-hmm. with all these people mm-hmm. to me is unbelievably sad. It makes me sad. Yes, and um, I agree. You know, that's the, that's the whole thing. I love to go to Salem. Mm-hmm. Salem's such an awesome place. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it always makes me, it just makes me sad. Right. You know, because it's um, so many people were not doing anything other than trying to help people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, it, it's just, uh, you know, the way it is, I guess. But that's a very cool story. Yes. Well, that was my last story. Great scouring as always. Thank you. And now it's time for the main attraction. Honored guests, friends, and marks, we here at the Paranormal Sideshow would ask that those faint of heart or weak of the knees to please switch off this broadcast as it's time for the supernatural spectacle, a mystery wrapped inside of an enigma and stuffed neatly inside of a Tijuana taco roll. It's now time for our main attraction. All right. This week, I'm very stoked for this. 
This is Mysterious and Unexplained Manuscripts. Yay. I I'm, love books. Yeah, man. I, I'm so, we, we are so into this. And anybody who's a longtime listener of the show knows that we really, we really get down with this. I mean, we're, we're so excited about the, um, uh, about, I mean, come on, who's not excited about something they can't explain? Even the best experts in the world, mm -hmm. they, they, they spend their, their hard earned college educations to try to mm -hmm. figure these out and they oh, yeah. can't, exactly. they're baffled. And, you know, it's, it's, um, to me, I, I believe that some of them may be like a medieval acid trip, um, <laughs> but maybe others are not not supposed to be, um, you know, understood just yet. Right. There's a special time that they arrive. Right. Um, lost and, and then found for a certain, you know, particular reason. Right. Um, and and I, I do know that we have some certain rules about our books that we're going to talk about today. Okay. Um, we always talk about the Voynich Manus Manuscript. We do. It's one of my favorites. We love it. Yes. Right? Absolutely love the that The book one. that can't be read. I wish I could afford one of those duplicates they're making. I mean, it's just, <laughs> um, you know, we, we talk about that a lot. We've chronicled everything about the Voynich Manuscript. Mm -hmm. I would probably put it number one, except I love the Devil's Bible. Um, well, it's pretty mysterious, too. The whole story behind it. Mm -hmm. I like the lore behind it better than anything. You the know, story, yeah. If you don't know about it, and I've talked about it, I've chronicled it in depth on previous shows, um, you know, written in the night, um, mm -hmm. it, supposedly. No way it could have been done, but it was all done in the same hand, which should have took years and years, maybe 20 years or something Wasn't to do it. Wasn't it really big, too? Like, yeah. the size of it was huge. Well, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's mm -hmm. just it's just fantastic. The, the, and the story on both of those, the Voynich and the Devil's Bible, you know, Go find stuff on those. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. But we're hoping to learn you something. <laughs> so we want to talk about some books that don't just come up in every top five list. Exactly. You know? So um, I'm going to start this off. Okay. You start. I will. Um, I want to say Rohonk, but Donkey Donk, really bad. <laughs> I don't know why, and I apologize. Um, but <laughs> this one, I love this one. So I'm going to start off with it. The Rohonk Codex. Ooh, I love a thing called Codex. You know, yeah. it's got to be mysterious. Oh yeah, yeah. And we, <laughs> we, 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 uh, or a feminine product, <laughs> one, one or the other. Um, the Rohonk, the Rohonk Codex, uh, one of the most mysterious books in existence today. It's a work known as the Rohonksi Codex, commonly spelled Rohonk Codex. Not only do we not know what it says. We also have no idea where it comes from. Ooh, mysterious. The Codex has 448 paper pages, each one having between 9 and 14 rows of symbols, which may or may not be letters. Oh, they don't even know. No. Ah, oh, okay. Besides, besides the text, there are 87 illustrations that include religious and military scenes. The crude illustrations seem to indicate an environment where Christian, pagan, and Muslim religions coexisted. Wow. As the symbols of the cross, crescent, and sun slash swastika are all present. Wow. In the early 19th century, the manuscript was donated to the Hungarian Academy of Sciences in the city of Rohonk by a Hungarian count. But that's where the trail tapers off. One of the reasons the Rohan Codex has remained undeciphered for so long is its apparent alphabet. Hmm. Most alphabets have somewhere between 20 and 40 characters, making it relatively easy to start replacing coded symbols in, with letters. Right. The Rohan Codex has nearly 200 separate symbols in 448 pages. Good gracious. And no matter how many scholars take a crack at it, nobody can agree on a translation. It's such an impressive code that scholars in the 19th century concluded it had to be a hoax. <laughs> of course, because they, they didn't understand it, it. Yeah. Although these days <laughs> it's believed to be genuine. Wow. If you want to take a crack at it, you can access all the pages online. Well, that's now, pretty cool. I have a theory. Right. Of how to crack it. Okay. I think it gives you the clues with what is included together. Coexisting are Christian, mm -hmm. pagan, mm -hmm. and Muslim. Right. So I believe that you have to find a Christian, <laughs> a pagan, right, and a Muslim scientist or code breaker. This sounds like a joke, like the beginning of a joke. They, they not walk into a bar, <laughs> but I, I, maybe the whole point of that book 
uh-huh. is to coexist. Maybe. And Make them work together. Something that from the dawn of time until this very day, mm-hmm. what is all the problems? The Christians and the Muslims mm-hmm. fighting each other. Right. Not trusting each other. Mm-hmm. Not coexisting. Both of them hating pagans. Of course. The Christians and the Muslims both hate the pagans. Of course. The pagans would probably hug them all, but, <laughs> you know, they, they both hate the pagans. Right. Um, none of these have ever coexisted. Very biblical here. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the Holy Lands will always be in strife. Right. You know, they're always going to be fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, what if, what if it's just a um, proof that we need to coexist? Maybe it could be. Maybe it's one of those things where we're not ready to decipher it yet. That's why we can't. Yeah, because we are obviously not coexisting very well. Obviously. At all. That's exciting. I love things when, like, codes and things. Yeah. I mean, I love puzzles. I'm right. a puzzle person. And I, I like to do, like, cryptograms and stuff. But I am not smart enough to be decoding ancient books. <laughs> I mean, if you ever want to win Stacy's heart, <laughs> you have to do what I've done in the past and just get a hold of the puzzle company. And order the box of of cryptogram books. Oh, it's like Christmas. Just cryptogram books, <laughs> and she is just set. Give her a couple of pencils and a pencil sharpener, and put her in a room. And uh, it's it's two 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 trains of thought here. Either you want to get on her sweet side, or you don't want to see her for a while. <laughs> now I've experienced both of those sensations. Right. And and the cryptogram books are always a good way. So you would be a good code breaker. I would be, um, I guess. I, do, I, I, I think it's interesting. I, I do think I love. I love that one though. Yeah, I, that I, one's really cool. I yeah. just, I just think that it's got. Um, I don't know. I, I, it seems genuine to me. Yeah. I don't know what the reason for it is, mm-hmm. but but that's when you know kids look more into it. So yeah. Well, You're, cool. Well, let me do one. Okay. Okay. So the first one I'm going to talk about is called the Book of Soiga. This is another very mysterious book that has not been decoded. Oh, absolutely. Also. So this book's most famously associated with John D. He was mm-hmm. a mathematician. Right. And he was obsessed with the book. Yes. Completely obsessed. And he just tried to translate it all the time. And he realized when he was working on it that it was like an in-depth list of like magical incantations and different things. And the most mysterious part about it was the last 36 pages. Mm-hmm. There were these tables of letters it was like 36 by 36 tables right. of just random letters that looked just haphazard and made just chaos. The whole thing was just chaos. Right, right. And he absolutely could not crack the code. He was so frustrated. So in 1552, in March of 1552, he went to see a medium. Right. That could, Famous medium. Yes, that could channel angels. Right. And he asked him to channel an angel, and he the medium channeled Archangel Uriel. Mm-hmm. And so... The first thing John D. asked him, of course, was about the right. Book of Soiga because he was so obsessed with it, he wanted to know. And the information that he got was that the book had been given, it was associated with Adam in the Garden of Eden. Like right. it was just ancient. And that the archangel didn't know the secrets of the book. Right. Um, that only the archangel, archangel, <laughs> archangel Michael did. Right. And Damn, that, <laughs> that if he were to crack the secrets, the deadly angle. Or know them. Uh, it would result in his death. Right. So he never did unlock any of the secrets. And I don't know, you know, after being obsessed. Right. That obsessed as he was. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was totally obsessed. Yes. You have to wonder, did something drive him to that obsession? You know, other than other than the thirst for knowledge. We all have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go Adam and Eve again. Right. You know, what kicked him out of the garden? You know, the thirst for knowledge. Exactly. So, I mean, it's just very... uh, I don't know. I you could if I if I spent my life in that pursuit, mm-hmm. and I had to trade my life for the answer, right? I would do it. Oh well, that's that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, the book after John D. passed away, the book was lost for like nobody knew anything about it or where it was for like five hundred years. Wow, that's a and long time. And a woman named Deborah Harkness in nineteen ninety four, she was studying John D. and mm-hmm. working on some kind of thesis and she read about the Book of Soiga and she right. thought she would try and find it and she started in England and she actually found two copies. After five hundred years. Yeah. Well what So it is, in the five hundred years did they look for it? Yeah, people did, but the problem is is the title was a little different. Okay. So it wasn't under Soiga, it was there was a different like in another language title. And so that was made it hard for them to find I don't know if people actually knew about it or whatever. But she found it. And so people started studying it again. 
and but nobody still knew what it meant. So there was this other mathematician in 2006 named James Reeds, and he actually studied the tables at the end of the book, the really mysterious tables, mm-hmm. and he figured out the mathematical code to how the tables were created. And the way it works is there's a magic word, a seed, a keyword, so to speak, like right, in a code. Right, right. And if you use that word and a mathematical equation, you can create the table. So he figured out how all the tables were created. So he's all, he figured out that out of the 36 tables, the first 24 were actually the way the words worked were for the zodiac signs, two right. for each sign. And then there were seven for the planets, four for the elements, and the one at the end was something called the Magister. And so those were, they. he figured out all the magic keywords that were used mm-hmm. to create the tables. And the really strange thing was the Zodiac ones, the reason that they were in there twice is they were in there with the word frontwards and then the word reversed. Wow. So what looked like tables of just chaos were actually very mathematical and accurate and how old was the book? Do they know? They they don't know because all the only information was that it was given from the Garden of Eden. I mean, that's some pretty advanced technique. Yeah. And, and, and I know that we had some of our greatest mathematicians, you know, throughout. Right. Yeah. Well, but now, I mean, nobody really knows the significance speaking, speaking of the book of still. Angles. Yeah. Nobody even knows the significance of the book. He just figured out how those tables were created. That's all that he's right. figured out and that there was a word associated with it and that it was associated with, you know. So the world kind of went to crap around then, too. I guess. You I know? know. But um, it's really interesting. And he actually uh, made digital Right. Re- I mean, I think the banks collapsed a year after he did that. <laughs> Maybe. He recreated the, the tables in digital format, and you can actually look at them and see how the letters were all. And he explains, like, he goes really in depth and explains how it was done. Now, he didn't die after he did this because he didn't technically unlock any of the secrets of the book. Right. But he was really interested in the code breaking, and he figured that part of it out at least. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. So it's, it's It's crazy. It's crazy that it's so in depth, and mm-hmm. and, 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 mm-hmm. and we don't know the age and. Right. Well, another thing I thought was pretty interesting is if you take the name Soiga and you read it backwards, it's the Greek word for holy. Wow. And they try to throw this symbology in it where, um, you know, where it's attributed to creation and all kinds of biblical stuff. So I don't know. It's very mysterious. That's awesome. Very mysterious. Very awesome. <laughs> the um, I hope they don't figure any more of it out. No, That's... no, I don't think I'd want to know the secrets if it's going to kill you. Yeah. So I've got one. Okay. The Chronicle of Portents and Prophecies. Ooh, that just sounds cool. It sounds woody, doesn't it? Yes, it it's does. It's a very woody title. <laughs> portents, portents, portents. portents. <laughs> Caribou gone. <laughs> this book was written in 1557. Wow. And by the French humanist Conrad Lacothus. Oh, okay. Laid out like an encyclopedia. The book transcribes otherworldly happenings since the time, once again, Uh you ready for it? Sure. Adam and Eve. Wow. A lot of mysterious stuff coming from then, huh? A lot of Adam and Eve going on. Yeah, okay. And we're not talking about lingerie, (laughs) you dirty-minded people. Sandwiched in between, and stop it, (laughs) sandwiched in between well-documented disasters, floods, and meteor showers, Mm -hmm. even including Halley's Comet. Our descriptions of sea monsters. Wow. UFOs mm-hmm. in 1557. Right. By the way. Uh, and various biblical themes. Wow. Let me go ahead and say again UFOs. Right. 1557. But put in between accounts that can actually be backed up, right. like disasters and things. Right, 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 right. In between all. So it seems factual. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Okay. Uh, the Chronicle was incredibly detailed and contained over 1,000 original wood cut illustrations of the phenomenon described wow yeah a lot of time Mm -hmm. um there are still several copies floating around usually on rare book websites where they sell for several thousands of dollars wow the most famous image is of a comet seen over arabia in 1479 which resembles a space rocket oh there Uh, was a picture yeah you know this picture ah okay Uh, this illustration is still popular among ufo enthusiasts Trust me, if I show you this picture, you know this picture. Uh, so it's supposed to be a comet, but it looks a lot like a UFO. Yeah. Ah, yeah, like a space like a rocket. rocket. Very That's generic cool. term. That's cool. Yeah, no, it's it's cool because it's got so much, I mean, it, it sounds like one of my notebooks. 
Right. You know? And I mean, obviously <laughs> he was recording things that really happened. He right. wasn't just making up stories. Right. So, so that's really crazy. Yeah, I love the fact that it's it's mixed in with, uh, you know, most great books have mm-hmm. a lot of facts that really happened with a bunch of hogwash in between. <laughs> I, I can't I can't put my finger on any right at the moment, <laughs> but it seems like there's some really popular ones out there. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, you know, if if we were millionaires, I would totally just buy old rare books. I'd we wouldn't. A- we wouldn't be millionaires very long. No, we wouldn't because I'd buy all these old rare books. Okay, anyway, so this next one I want to talk about um, is really unusual and mysterious. It's The book is not necessarily mysterious, but the whole circumstances around it is. And it's actually called The Story of the Vivian Girls. Ah. And that that's the short title. Sounds like a Cinemax after dark. Well, that's the short title. The actual title of the story is The Story of the Vivian Girls in what is known as the Realms of the Unreal of the Glandeco Angolinian war storm caused by the child slave rebellion. Of course. That's the name of the book. So that sounds like the worst penny dreadful of all time. <laughs> well, here's the thing. It was written by a man named Henry Darger. Darger. He was a janitor from Chicago. Okay. And he wrote this story and nobody ever knew about it. And it was 15,000 pages long. Okay. So one guy... <laughs> One guy wrote this. Yes, and it, it's it's even weirder than that. Okay, keep going. So he died in 1973, mm-hmm. and they found this book in his apartment. He just lived in a little cramped one bedroom apartment by himself, and he had eight, uh, seven, seven volumes that were already bound that he bound himself. He had heavy cardboard covered with wallpaper samples. The pages were typewritten. He glued them back to back and hand stitched them together and to the covers. Wow. And then there was like, then there were unbound volumes, like volumes eight to about 13, unbound, but in order. Then there were numerous registers and journals, notebooks, loose pages everywhere, just put together, like where he wrote different parts of the story, and they had to kind of piece them together. I wish Tolkien had done that. And it was (sighs) approximately 15,000 pages. They said over 9 million words this man wrote on this Jeez. one story but not only that there were over 300 watercolor illustrations that he made by taking pictures from magazines and newspapers and like posing them and then tracing around them and then painting them with watercolors and some of the pictures were even huge like meter three meters wide on these big wow. sheets of paper that went along with the story so this took him decades I mean, absolutely decades, but he'd never told anyone. Nobody knew anything about it. It's still not even a published story. You can find excerpts of it and you can see the artwork, but it is not an ongoing published story. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's just so amazing. How how possessed. Exactly. That's what I thought. I mean, how how could you get this story in your head and you just had to to write it down like that? It's almost like someone used him as a vessel. To right. to make him do that. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine being that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like to write. Yeah. You know, I, uh-huh. I, I write. I've been, I've been writing since I was in third mm-hmm. grade, uh, songs and, and poems. Mm-hmm. And, and, and whenever whenever something takes my fancy, I'll write a story or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. I love to write. Yeah. But God bless. Well, I, I was trying to get some because, you know, you read 15,000 pages over 9 million words. but And I was trying to think of what is the longest book I can think about. And of course, I thought of Lord of the Rings. Which and is not that long at all. No, and I was I, I wanted to kind of compare it. So I looked up to see how many pages that was. And I mean, you're looking at maybe, maybe 2,500, yeah. if it's big print, pages. And this is 15,000. I mean, how much detail and, and work had to go into that. It's just amazing. I'm just amazed. And he typed it all and hand-stitched the bound volumes. I mean, yeah, I mean wow. I, I mean... Wow. <laughs> That's all you can say about it. It's yeah. crazy. And it's like fifteen very long novels, right? I, I guess so. But supposedly it's all the same story and it's about this governor, um, Robert Vivian. He's like the governor of the Angelinian place, mm-hmm. realm or whatever, and he has seven daughters and those are, they're called the Vivian girls. And they're like princesses or, you know, royalty or whatever. And so the whole story is all about them, I suppose. 
It sounds awesome. It does. I wish oh. it had been published, but no, it hasn't been. I mean, let's let's make a movie. Let's it make a long TV series. It wasn't even finished when he was done. I mean, they were trying to piece it together when they found it. I'm sure we could wrap it up. I'm sure. You know. You could tell when somebody wrapped it up to you. You'd have all this big, long detail. And all of a sudden, the end would be like, and everybody lived happily ever after. All this grandeur and this great stories, and all of a sudden, they all die. They do a suicide pact. Oh God, only if you give it to George R. R. Martin to finish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have sex and then they die. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, anyway, your well, turn. I don't think I have anything that great. <laughs> no. Um. So this one. Uh huh. Very cool. Okay. The Ripley Scrolls. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, it's got a good name. Another Woody name. Yes. It's Ripley. Ripley. You can't. You can't be mysterious unless you have a good Woody name. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Written by Sir. George Ripley, mm-hmm. a 15th century writer. Not the 1500s this time, but 15th century. 15th century, different thing. Yeah. <laughs> so a 15th century writer who created some of the longest lasting works on the subject of alchemy. Ooh. One of our favorite subjects. Yes, interesting. The scrolls are a picture book recipe for creating the elusive philosopher's stone. Oh. A fictional material supposedly able to turn lead into gold. Lots wow. of men spent their whole life, you know, looking you think, for that. Do you think it's fictional? No. Okay. I do not. <laughs> um, although the original version of the Ripley Scrolls has been lost to time, a handful of artists in the 16th century created reproductions of the alchemical work, mm-hmm. and 23 of those remain. Each one is slightly different. Since all of the reproductions were made by hand, the largest scroll is a mass of six meters, which is like 20 feet yeah. uh, long, with a dense patchwork of illustrations covering the majority of it. Wow. And no, I do not think that the Philosopher's Stone is hogwash. I um yeah. I I think that anything's possible. Mm-hmm. And I also am under the belief that if you can dream it up, it can happen. Well, that's true. You know what would happen to me? I'd get one of the copies of the book where the guy made a mistake. And I'd be trying to make the Philosopher's Stone, and he'd, he'd have drawn the picture just a little <laughs> wrong, and I'd end up blowing everything up. He'd turn it into a skunk or something. <laughs> All right. Well, I have one more. Okay. Let's do this last one. All right. Okay. So this last one's called the Smithfield Decretals. Mm. It's officially known as the Decretals of Gregory the Ninth, and it's a collection of canonical law that right. was ordered in the 13th century by Pope Gregory the Ninth. So the collections like this were pretty common, you know, where they're writing all the law down and things like that. So what's really bizarre about this one were the pictures that went along with them. So what this was, was it was an (laughs) illuminated manuscript. Mm -hmm. And what that means is, um, you know, there was a lot of pictures. Like in fairy tale stories, we have the first letter and it's like a big picture with flowers. Right, I love that. Yes, that's an illuminated manuscript. So you see this a lot in medieval times when people like write the Bible, but then they're drawing pictures done by hand. Right. Very expensive, very painstaking. If you mess up, you got to start over, right? Amazing, yeah. So um, I can't imagine how boring it must have been handwriting um, just law all day long. So what happened was there are just ridiculously odd illustrations to go along with this book. And as you go through, you see um, violent scenes of things like giant rabbits decapitating people and geese lynching a wolf, unicorns, um, lots of vaguely sexual themes. Vaguely? <laughs> okay, not vaguely, very explicit not, not, um, but not vague at all, is it? No, not vague at all. But there are hundreds of pages and hundreds of scenes, and you can actually just go online and Google this. And it's like you, bestiality. Oh, t- yeah. Yeah. All kinds of crazy, crazy stuff. And, you know, I might be wrong. It didn't say this in the article, but weren't these mostly done by, like, monks and things like that? Aren't those the people that did these illuminated pages? Y- yes, and they were normally the only ones that were educated to do that. Right. And, and, and so... Were they just unhappy with well, I mean, what was going on? I don't know. If I was forced to be a monk, right, you would find all kinds of drawings under my bed. Um, <laughs> if I had if I had no other access to the outside world, right, um, you know, just letting you know, mm-hmm. um, because you can currently find all kinds of drawings in my notebooks. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah. I've always been that way. Oh I, yeah, I, they're probably I, just about as weird as this. Yeah, too. and they are. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why when whenever we seen this this story and, and the, or this book, I laugh, but I don't laugh because the stuff's in there, like the guy going down on a lion or whatever. Right. I don't laugh because of that. 
mm-hmm. I laugh because I probably have that in one of my notebooks. <laughs> well, um, you know, there is, um, I mean, I, I love to write, like I said, mm-hmm. but I also draw as I do it. And, and it, right. the crazy stuff like three headed goats and, yeah. you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So I get it. I, I get it. I understand why they were either just bored or, or upset or whatever. But one thing that was funny is there were a lot of articles going around last year about a picture that's in this book that looks exactly like Yoda from Star Wars. Really? And someone had discovered it. And they Chicken were, or the egg. And lots of stories that went around. Um, cause, and I saw the picture. It looks like a tall Yoda, but it looks like had the ears and it was green. Is Yoda was, doing anything dirty? Um, no, he it's just standing there. Oh. But I thought that was really unusual. I didn't know if maybe he had his lightsaber like out. <laughs> no, no, not playing with his lightsaber. <laughs> no, no, it's very cool though, and it, and you know, once again, it's uh, there's more mysterious books out there. Oh, there's so many, and so and, many. and it's it's awesome, and and I love old books anyway. I love the mm-hmm. smell of an old book. I oh, love the feel too. of an old book, mm-hmm. and and just to think, uh, what well, my I've got sort of a romantic mind, and. and um, I'm very much for 700, 800 AD, um, you know, up through the Middle Ages. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I love it so much. I have suspicions as to why. Right. Uh, kind of like the same reason that I'm so drawn to the ocean, you know, but <laughs> and blacksmithing, but uh, as weird as that is, and protecting people. Right. Anyway, um, I, I love it. And, and, and I think about this inside a castle or a monastery mm-hmm. in, in a big, giant fireplace. Right. right. And someone sitting properly mm-hmm. at, at, at a uh, table and, and, and drawing using this ink and, 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 you know, taking their time and really putting their passion and their heart and, and everything into these, these manuscripts. Right. And in the secluded corner of, you know, uh, Europe or, you know, wherever they may be, mm-hmm. um, and, and what things came to them because uh we we are in this techno you know technological world now where you don't have time to communicate with the other side you don't have time to meditate everything goes so fast right but when you take that time to mm-hmm. meditate or to think about it you know I'll, I'll give you an example when we go on an investigation mm-hmm. it's the only time we're not around chaos That's so true. we're in these um, buildings or these homes or these these uh, these grounds, and we actually take the time to shut up, mm-hmm. and we take the time to really try to become one with the elements, mm-hmm. one with the forest, one with the the building that we're in, right? And you know, really feel it and and, and hear it, listen, actually listen, you know, and what what comes to you. You know, what? where does your mind go? You know more than anyone. When you're by yourself, your mind goes a million places mm-hmm. and quickly, right. you know. So if you had no distractions, mm-hmm. if you had nobody feeding you these distractions on purpose, right? where would your mind go and what would it do? And, and would you create like these incredible mathematical codes right. to put in a book that mm-hmm. would last forever right. for at least thousands of years? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, you would. Mm-hmm. And 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 because you want this to last, you want someone as smart as you to 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 find it. Are they all driven by some demon or 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 UFO or something like that? I highly doubt it. You know, I think it's the, right. I think it a lot of it is the beauty of the of the human mind mm-hmm. and what it can create, but I will say this. There are a few that are very unexplainable. Yes. And very much confusing. And and they do seem like they have a purpose or a meaning. Mm -hmm. And somebody out there listening right now could be excited about what we've talked about Mm -hmm. and go look it up for yourself. Most of these are available to even see online. Yeah. A lot of them you can, they've digitized them and stuff and you can take a look at the pages. And maybe this happened and Mm -hmm. we talked about this. So you, the listener, can go out. And decode this and find out what the meaning is or what it means to you. And that, my friends, is what it's all about. But thank you because this was a great main attraction. Yes, it was. All right. Well, 
books aside, mm-hmm. um, for more on this and more on uh, some links to, to some of these books, uh, mm-hmm. links on even to uh, maybe some videos on some of these books, yes. um, go to ParanormalSideshow.com because that's your address to everything there is bookie. And uh, Facebook.com slash Paranormal Sideshow. On the Twitter, it's at Sideshow97. And on Instagram, hot damn, it's John and Stacy Edwards. And on YouTube, you just search Paranormal Sideshow. Don't forget iTunes, kids, because, um, you know, we need you to subscribe and leave a review. And those of you with Android, we've actually, um, you know, just to give you a little insight to the show, we've had a ton coming from uh, one Android um, well, it's an app. It's actually called Podcast Addict, and yeah. you can only get it on Android devices. And I don't know. So we're we're big Apple people. Yeah, I so. don't. I'm not sure exactly where it pulls the podcast from. Yeah, but I can't look at it because I don't have an Android yeah, device. But, but but anyway, we've had thousands of downloads from there. So thank you very yeah. much. Uh, it's very cool. I don't know if it was featured on there or whatever, but just uh, you know, recently. So mm-hmm. um, just wanted to throw that out there. We appreciate and love all the listeners, but I also want to give a little bit of love to something from this past weekend that uh, I wanted to wait till the end of the show here to talk about it. I had a very great opportunity. And over the years, Stacy and I have got a chance to speak at high schools. We've had, we've had a chance to meet college students and, mm-hmm. and come to classes, be invited to classes and speak, um, give presentations on the paranormal. I always and, love doing that at and schools. Yeah, it's so and, much fun. Any school, elementary schools, high schools, colleges, uh, lectures in general. I love it. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, so invigorating it's it's exactly why you do it because you know you get out there and you tell your theories and you and you get to share what it is and you might get one person that Mm -hmm. is inspired by that Mm -hmm. to go do that for the rest of their life and that to me is beautiful you know um but had a great experience this past week our great friend franny miller who is a she holds the badge for a lifetime member (laughs) of whatever we're doing right Um, she's one of the sweetest most perfect human beings um, that we are blessed to know on this planet. I have never met anybody as sweet next to my wife that than than Franny Miller and uh, Franny. I think she might have me beat. Uh, she, she's she, she's, pretty <laughs> she's pretty special. Pretty sweet. Um, Fran, Franny asked me to. Um, she was teaching a class on um, reality TV, mm-hmm. and um, you know, for whatever reason. <clears throat> Um, she wanted me to talk cause I've done the documentaries and I have the project coming up, right? Uh, a couple of projects coming up. Um, uh, so, uh, she wanted me to come talk about the paranormal cause it was Halloween. Right. Um, so obviously I couldn't go to, uh, uh, Tennessee to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so instead for her class, I did a video mm-hmm. and got to talk, um, for about 10 minutes and we put some evidence in there and, um, it was just a great opportunity. And, and the kids, um, I call them kids, the college students were so excited about this that after a certain thing airs that I still can't talk about, mm-hmm. um, I told them though, cause right. they're, my, they're, they're, you know, they're my homies now. Right. They know. Um, but I told them, you know, well, they were excited and they asked her if they could, if the class could actually reunite and come back. Oh yeah. So and I check could, it out. So I could talk to them. Yeah. And, um, cause I'll, I'll live Skype it or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, Franny, thank you. Uh, thank you for being an awesome person and thank you for the opportunity. And I just wanted to mention it because it was very sweet and, and it's always an honor to be able to talk uh, to any students. Mm-hmm. Uh, it always, always touches my heart and means so much. And speaking of touching my heart, um, for my lovely wife, Stacy, my name's John Edwards. And so long from the sideshow. Good night.